Okay. We are super excited to cover something that we've gotten a lot of questions over the years. And that is the difference between Foxit Phantom PDF and Adobe Acrobat. Both of these products cover a lot of the same things, but their approach is a little different. So we thought we would make a video that helps kind of cover those differences between those different products, as well as a lot of the similarities. Also, we might even talk about some pricing and other things that you find super helpful. So let's get into it. Now we're going to start off with Aaron, who is pretty familiar with uh, his product, so we're going to kick it off to him. So right now, uh, just based on their website, I mean, their, their single license is about 140 bucks. Um, Kaylee, do you know the, the price on Acrobat uh, standard right now? Yeah, um, I'm getting at about, about um, 179 so 180 okay. So not a huge difference, mm -hmm. but the thing is, is when you're talking about buying 10 licenses or 20 licenses or 50 licenses of this product, you know, that's now starting to become a significant difference as well as the ongoing uh, updates for the product. So you want to keep the, up, the product up to date every single year. So with Foxit, you know, it's, it's, you know, probably in the uh, 20 to $30 range per year, just mm -hmm. to always be on the latest version. And so this in general is what the uh, the Foxit screen looks like. Um, now I have done a little bit of customization to get it exactly how I like it, but uh, right now we're just looking at a generic employment contract. And the way that I like it set up is on the left-hand side here, we've got this pages panel that allows me to look at th a thumbnail view of all the pages in the document. Um, you can resize this as needed. In general, I like mine pretty small. Uh, just because, you know, I, I really just use it for scrolling through the document. And then you've got your, your actual page of the document here on, in, the, in the middle of it. Um, up at the top here, you've got your traditional ribbon bar. Uh, so on the home ribbon, you've got your most frequently used tools. And then you've got various other tools for converted, converting documents, editing documents, uh, some organization tools if you wanted to manipulate the pages commenting on documents, different ways to view it, uh, you know, form fields if you're into that kind of thing, uh, you know, marking up and redacting documents, sharing. I mean, you, essentially the, what you would expect from a, a product like this. So mm -hmm. um, I don't want to go too into the details of each of these. Uh, Kaylee, why don't, you, uh, why don't you show us the, uh, the Adobe screen? All right. Um, I am beginning to see a theme here um, where I am always representing the a product that I like to say is Gen Zified. <laughs> <laughs> um, meaning that it basically looks very similar to what you're going to, it has the same functions as what you're going to see um, from Aaron's, but it looks a little bit newer and cleaner and Ooh, more updated. I think that I. was a gauntlet. My goodness. <laughs> um, so <laughs> just like that. Just like that. No. Um, but um, here is what we're looking at for the same kind of document that Ooh, actually a lot in. less buttons. So well, a lot to less be buttons fair, uh, to be fair, I prefer to show all my buttons. I could have hidden them if, if, <laughs> if you wanted that. I, okay. And I can I am also hiding some of mine. So over here on this side, you're going to see the exact same thing as um, actually what Aaron had on his. So you're going to see um, the pages laid out just like he had, and you can change them, move them from here, bookmarks, attachments, all of that stuff is going to be on the left side, very similar to what Aaron had. And then um, something that's very different is actually how you edit. Um, so what Adobe did, this is super interesting. They have changed how they do things, um, meaning that what you do is you add these little applications or tools um, to your sidebar. So the tools are over here in the top left, you can see. Um, and these you can add to your list to the right side. So mm. you can have as many or as little as you'd like. Um, so there's so, so many options here, but I, what I did is I added um, to my bar all the ones that I use the most, okay? 
And so when you go back to this document and you would just basically edit or use any of these um, tools um, from the side and it opens up. So like if you edit the document, which is going to take a long time to do, but as you can see, um, it is going to pull up all of these extra tools to edit. Um, so it's so really me, different in ask, that way. Let me ask you this, Kaylee, because, and, and maybe this is just me coming from a, a different generation, but um, I have a hard time sometimes like knowing what a lot of these buttons are going to do. So like a lot of mm -hmm. times I prefer to see the actual text on the menu item and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's a great point. Yeah. Does it, um, does it I mean, have mouse over where it gives you the descriptions of those tools? So what it does here in tools um, is you do have the option to learn more about what, e what each tool is. So it'll bring mm -hmm. up like a little description about like what it does in a separate window. You guys can't see it, um, but it pulled it up in a separate window um, in Safari or, you know, Google Chrome, and it will list everything that that um, tool does. Yeah, I mean, it threw me off a little bit. Um, I will say when I first opened it up, I was kind of like, wait, <laughs> what's happening here? Because it, it does look different. It looks a little bit strange at first. But I will say the process of how it walked me through it when I first opened it up was really nice. And you even have a little option in the top right to click on um, a little chat window and it will talk you through each one of the things and mm -hmm. what it does and what things are for. So they've really tried to, even though they change things up a little bit on you, they still try to make it as user friendly as you could with those walkthrough processes and stuff like that. So Adobe has always done a really good job with walkthrough processes, though. So that's nothing new. Really, really, sure. I would say. All right. So next, what we want to do is cover some key features and functionalities that we feel really people are going to use on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So let's kick it back off to Aaron to kind of dive into what he's got, and then we'll switch back to Kaylee. Sure. Uh, let me let me share my screen here with my minimalistic uh, toolbar. Minimalistic. Um, you'll notice that there's nothing <laughs> here now. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I love wow. it. Pivoting um, so at its I best. have decided not to pin my toolbar like mm -hmm. I, I like I like it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just just to do a little rebuttal on uh, on Kaylee's uh, uh, attack on me here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, just like with any Microsoft product, and, and this is not a Microsoft product, but, um, you know, you can customize this ribbon however you want. Now, um, so, I mean, if I wanted to hide everything on here or add things, you know, you have a full uh, capability of, of manipulating this however you want. So, um, why don't we start with uh, just page manipulation? Um, and this is one of the things that, uh, quite frankly, sold me on the product. And, and I apologize. I have to I have to put this back. I can't stand having it minimized. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Oh um, this this page's uh, uh, ribbon over here on the left just makes it super easy to manipulate uh, the order of pages, rotate things. So I mean, you can literally click, drag and drop around in here. You can hold down your control key or your shift key and select multiple pages, move them around. It's literally just a quick drag and drop. Uh, I'm going to open up a second document here, and you'll notice how it opened it up in a, a second tab. Now, that is an option. If I wanted to open up this into a separate window, I would literally just drag and drop the tab off of the bar there, oh. just like you would in a web browser, and it's now in a second window. Mm -hmm. Same thing if I wanted to put it back, Ooh, I can just intuitive. drag and drop and like put that. it back. It's very intuitive. Yeah, you know? Same thing with manipulating pages. I can literally just drag and drop this onto this other tab and drop it right here into this document and vice versa. So it mm -hmm. makes it extremely easy to move documents or move pages uh, between the documents and also within the documents. Mm. Um, rotating pages or deleting pages. I mean, you can right click on any one of these if you highlight multiples and you can delete pages, you can insert pages from other files, you can extract pages into their own documents. Um, duplicate pages. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, it, it, I expect all of these same features are within Adobe Acrobat as well. Mm -hmm. I just find it extremely simple to use this pages panel on the left when I'm doing a lot of work within documents. Mm -hmm. So Kayla, why don't, why don't you go over what, uh, how it, you can manipulate pages within uh, Adobe? Yeah, um, super, super similar. Again, um, 
Uh, let me share. But my much screen. cleaner, right? But much, much prettier. <laughs> Very Gen Z. Much cleaner. Um, so, yes, that same um, left panel is also there for Adobe. And you're going to see that same similarity of manipulating pages. So you can also drag and drop your pages here and move them um, to a specific location. Um, you can also um, right click and you're going to see the um, insert pages extract. Can you guys see that on my screen or no? Does yeah. it get yeah. rid of it? Okay, just making sure you can see it. And it's going to be very similar uh, style and um, options. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, similarities here now, yeah. that, uh, now that I'm seeing both products side by side. Mm -hmm. Can you show us it's, how you merge? Yeah, so with merging, um, you can either add a file um, this way. Um, you can insert pages from a certain file or from your clipboard or create a blank page in a document. Or you can use the tool, which is combine file. Um, so as you can see, that's added to the side already. And you would click combine file and then add which one you would like to combine to the page. And it will combine them for you. Um, so another thing that I wanted to just say is um, let me do the same thing that Aaron did and just prove that. <laughs> Aaron, I can also do it as well. Let me share my, I need to share my full screen. So let me show, if I share my full screen, you can see that when you pull this out, it also has a separate window for Very this. Very cool. Uh, so it's just, it looks different, you know? Um, ah, so where's the toolbar? <laughs> <laughs> can you, you put it back in? So now that you pulled it out, can you put it back? Yeah. What, what if I really like a toolbar? Can you know, what does it look oh, like with the toolbar? Back. One thing that I will say, and it's, it, I, I does kind of go without saying, but I think it also is um, needed to be said here is that one thing that Adobe Acrobat is always going to have over um, Foxit, um, which is going to be the collaboration between all the Adobe products. Um, and uh, what I mean by that is if you're going through something and let's say you see an image or something like that and you want it to get sent to something like, let's say, Adobe Photoshop, it easily just by one click, you can send it over um, to Adobe Photoshop and it's super easy to just extract that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that that's that's fair statement. Like if I'm using the entire Adobe suite, it would make sense for me to use Adobe Acrobat. Mm -hmm. um, at least with my clients, most of them are using just general office applications. So that necessity for that integration just isn't there. Well, that was super informative. Thank you both really for kind of given us those different perspectives. It seems to me that, in my opinion, both products are extremely powerful and have all the capability that I think anybody would need. It, it really starts coming down to uh, capabilities, price, and uh, implementation and training and those types of things. I think those are going to be uh, a bit of the driving force, especially maybe the history of where you come from. So I hope you really appreciated this video. And if you would, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks so much for watching our video. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel for more content. Bye.